The following program is transcribed. Now for an hour of comedy brought to you by the makers of Anison for fast relief from pain of headaches, neuritis, and neuralgia. By Chesterfield, the only cigarette that combines mildness with no unpleasant aftertaste. The cigarette that brings you Bing Crosby and Bob Hope. By your local Ford dealer who is now displaying the new 1951 Ford, the car that's built for the years ahead. And by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. In 30 minutes, you will hear Duffy's Tavern, but now it's radio's newest comedy show, The Magnificent Montague. Magnificent Montague, starring Monty Woolley. <laughs> Before we begin, a word about a great drug product. If you suffer from pains of headaches, neuritis, and neuralgia, you should discover what many thousands have known for years, that Anison brings incredibly fast, effective relief. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Probably at some time you've received an envelope containing Anison tablets from your physician or dentist. Thousands of people have been introduced to Anison this way. Try Anison yourself the next time you suffer from the pains of a headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. You'll be delighted at how quickly relief can come. Anison is spelled A-N-A-C-I-N. Your druggist has Anison in handy boxes of 12 and 30 tablets and economical family-sized bottles of 50 and 100 for your medicine cabinet. Ask for Anison today. And now for the magnificent Montague, this former monarch of the Shakespearean stage who has now sunk to radio as Uncle Goodhart of an afternoon program. As usual, it is morning in the Montague apartment. Agnes and Lily are awaiting his first grand appearance of the day, his arrival at the breakfast table. Good morning, Agnes. Coffee? Here you are, honey. Ah, thank you, Agnes. Is the thing up yet? (laughs) You mean Edwin? I don't mean Guy Lombardo. Really, Agnes, can't you refer to my husband in any other way but the thing? Honey, I've spent 25 years trying to figure out a way to describe him. He always comes out the thing. (laughs) Agnes, that's silly. Silly? Is he a stage actor? No, he's in radio. Is he in radio? No, he won't admit he sunk that low. Is he human? No, he's a beast. Is he a beast? No, he's a jerk. (laughs) Agnes, please, remember he's my husband. There must be some way of getting you a purple heart. (laughs) Agnes, for me, will you please make an effort to get along with Edwin? Get along? Honey, you're looking at a broad who's fighting for a life. (laughs) Agnes, it isn't that bad. The minute he gets up in the morning, it's the law of the jungle. But, Agnes, if you're a little more tolerant with him, I'm sure he'll unbend. Honey, for ten years I've been wearing pointed shoes just waiting for him to bend. (laughs) Agnes, sweetheart, now remember, Edwin's going through a mental strain trying to keep it a secret that the magnificent Montague of the legitimate theater is in radio. And Uncle Goodhart at that. Now try and get along with him. Just once, will you say... Good morning to him. Good morning? Okay, honey, for you. <laughs> oh, good. He'll be out any minute. It's almost time for his morning vocal exercises. D-I-O. Here we go, roaming the hill. I roam the hills. I roam the e i o. Lo, hear the gentle lark. Agnes, go ahead. Oh. Good morning, Mr. Montague. What was that? (laughs) Edwin, Agnes was saying good morning. Is that what that sound was? I thought the city was widening the street. (laughs) Edwin, 
Agnes bring his breakfast? See what I mean, honey? It's dog eat dog. Dog? Good. What a welcome change from her usual breakfast. <laughs> Edwin, this can't go on. Agnes is making an effort to get along with you. Agnes, serve him his breakfast. Here it comes. My morning bout with Lucretia Borgia. <laughs> How do you want your eggs, sunny side up or in your face? <laughs> All right, Miss Tomaine, scat, back to your garbage can. Edwin, don't. She's trying to be nice. Here's your eggs, Mr. Montague. See, Edwin? She called you Mr. Montague. Must she make it sound like a dirty word? <laughs> Here, Edwin, eat your eggs. God, what a messy sight. Just because the eggs were laid by a Plymouth rock, must they look as if a pilgrim just pulled his foot out of them? <laughs> look, they're just eggs. I buy them, fry them, and serve them. From there on, take it up with a chicken. <laughs> Edwin, eat your eggs. Oh. What's wrong now? Nothing, Agnes. Congratulations, you've discovered a new plastic. <laughs> Wait till he gets a load of the toast. Agnes. <laughs> Here's your toast, Mr. Montague. Stand back, honey. Uh, uh, yum, yum. Mammy's little baby loves buttered shingles. <laughs> you take these clinkers away. Now, now, they're just a little brown. Brown? This toast is so badly burnt, I'm sure I can collect insurance on it. <laughs> All right, Agnes. His coffee. Here. I'm afraid it's still hot. Thank you. <clears throat> well, Edwin, what's the matter? Lily, don't touch that coffee. Have it analyzed. <laughs> oh, Edwin, stop being so picky. So what if the coffee happens to be a mite strong? Lily, I don't mind strong coffee, but I do not like it when it comes out of the cup swinging. <laughs> I don't know what he's beefing about. He liked the coffee yesterday and it's the same grounds. Now, Edwin... <laughs> Edwin, you have a broadcast today. You, you can't go hungry. Hungry? The minute I look at that dirty apron she's wearing, my appetite's gone. <laughs> Dirty apron. My dear Agnes, let's face it. There are more nutritious vitamins on your apron than I've had all month. <laughs> Maybe you want me to serve your breakfast in my silk kimono. <laughs> the one that says golden gloves on the back? <laughs> now stop it. Now stop it, both of you. Why are we wasting all this time with his breakfast? Why don't I just go into his bedroom every morning with a whip and a chair and throw him a hunk of meat? Oh. Oh, please, spare me the sight of you when I first open my eyes. With those hair curlers on that flat head, you look like a roof full of television aerials. Why, you... you thing. Thing? You heard me. Be it ever so humble, there is no place like Iwo Jima. <laughs> Edwin, these fights every morning can't go on. Well, I'm glad you've come to realize it. Agnes has to go. Oh, let's not go through that again. Silly Agnes is a maid. She's supposed to cook and clean. Now, Edwin, Agnes is very neat. Very neat? Have you been in my den recently? I'm not asking you to take that dirt away. But if she'd only plow it once in a while... <laughs> Edwin, you know how you are. She's afraid to go into your den. So am I. <laughs> it's becoming a game preserve. <laughs> Edwin, stop being ridiculous. Lily, I'm serious. She's ruining my health. Oh, but Agnes has been with us for 25 years. And she was my wardrobe woman before that. We can't just turn Agnes out into the streets. We certainly can. Although, frankly, I'd rather wait until there was a blizzard. <laughs> no, Edwin, I, I won't permit it. Why, Agnes is our... our good luck piece. All right. Then let's uh, nail her over the door like a horseshoe. <laughs> Lily, I can't stand it anymore. Either she goes or I go. Edwin, maybe we can work it out. No, that's my decision. Get rid of her. 
Oh, after all these years, how can I do this? Give her a year's salary, anything. I'm going into my den, and when I return, I want this apartment to be Agnes-less. <laughs> Agnes. Yes, honey. Agnes, um, sit down. I- I'd like to talk to you. Is Bluebeard gone? <laughs> no, he's in the den. Agnes, um, w- we've been together a long time, haven't we? Yeah. We had a lot of laughs, too, before you went and fell for Count Dracula. <laughs> Remember that stock company in Cincinnati? <laughs> That guy playing Hamlet making a play for you. He sure was a pest. Until I put itching powder in his tights. <laughs> <laughs> and remember what happened to the scenery in Omaha. <laughs> Please, honey, no more. You're just making it tougher for me. Tougher for you? Yeah. I've been trying to put it off, but I can't. Well, Agnes, what is it? Honey, don't try and talk me out of it. I'm quitting. Yeah. I'm leaving before I become another notch in his cane. A notch in his cane. Yeah, didn't you ever notice them four notches in his cane? One for every person he's given a nervous breakdown to. I'm getting while the getting's good. But, Agnes, where will you go? Any place where I can relax, like a snake pit. (laughs) I'm all packed. I'm leaving before I can change my mind. Right away? Yeah, honey. You know, I wish I had one more chance to fix a meal for him. I got an idea for a casserole that'd make you a free woman. Oh, Agnes. I'll miss you so. Oh, don't worry. I'll keep in touch with you. So long, honey. Goodbye, Agnes. (laughs) Did I hear the front door slam? Was that wonderful, wonderful sound Agnes making her final exit from my life? Yes, Agnes. Agnes is gone. She went of her own accord. That's too bad. I was hoping we'd have to use force. (laughs) Edwin, how can you say things like that? Uh, Lily, Agnes is gone. Look, the sun is shining through the dirty windows. (laughs) Listen, my heart is singing. I'm a boy again. Kiss me, Lily. Oh, Edwin, Agnes is gone. All it took was getting Agnes out of the house, and I'm a new man. Here's your coat, little sunbeam. You have to get to your radio broadcast. Ah, now for a wonderful afternoon with my good friends and colleagues at the radio station. Lily, I never like to mention my competitors, but life can be beautiful. Now look, Simsa, you're the director of the Uncle Goodhart program. It's your duty to tell him. Mr. Springer, you're the producer. It's up to you to tell Mr. Montague. Now, since you just come out and tell him that in today's program, Uncle Goodhart befriends a homeless Airedale, and the sponsor insists he work with a live dog. A live dog? He doesn't even like to work with live people. (laughs) Mr. Springer, I have a wife and four children. You tell him. Well, I'll just tell him the Airedale licks his face a few times, and he kisses it back. Oh, no. Cinder, you're a coward. Mr. Springer, I've never denied that. (laughs) Please, you tell him. I do it, Zinzer, but I just get into another argument with him. He never argues with you. I know. He just hits me. (laughs) Now look, Zinzer. Shh, shh, shh. Here he comes. Now, you tell him about the dog. Um... Ah, Mr. Zinzer, good afternoon. Don't hit me. (laughs) (laughs) Hit you? Zinzer, my friend, I'm only holding out my hand to shake yours. Oh, you are? And my dear friend, Mr. Springer, how are you? Fine, fine, a little busy. Mr. Zinzer will explain a few minor points about today's Uncle Goodhart program. Uh, Don't rush off, Springer. Well, Zinzer... What have you imps devised for your old uncle to do this afternoon? Well... Tell him! (laughs) Mr. Montague, it's the sponsor's idea. A friendless Airedale comes to your cottage and you take him in. But naturally, Uncle Goodhart and man's best friend. Beautiful thought. We're using a live dog. (laughs) Excellent. He licks your face and... You kiss him back. What a scene. Stark realism. Oh, Zinza, we're going to give our listeners both barrels today. A live dog. 
I tried to get the sponsor to use an animal imitator. Oh, Springer, that's where you're wrong. Where is your imagination, your sense of the dramatic? But I'll forgive you if you will give me the name of your tailor. My tailor? I've always envied your immaculate appearance, your beautiful clothes. Really? Oh, I always pride myself on being well-dressed. I have a little tailor on 24th Street if you wish me to make an appointment for you. The most kind of you, Springer. No trouble at all, Mr. Montague. At Zinza. <laughs> Zinza, I was only saying to Mrs. Montague this morning, why don't we see more of Mr. Zinza? You want to see more of me, sir? Oh, I'm peeved at you, Mr. Zinza. You are, sir? You've never asked us out to your home. I've never met your family. We live in the Bronx. Aha, uh-huh, the Bronx. Haven't been there since a boy. My uncle had a farm there. <laughs> If you'd like to come to dinner, sir... That's super. The Bronx. It would do Lily and me a world of good to get out of the city. (laughs) But, Mr. Montague, I better warn you, I have four children. Oh, you most fortunate of men. All the blessings of a happy home. Zinza, I too now, for the first time in 25 years, have a happy home. Then we're invited? Well, gee, Mr. Montague, I never expected... Uh, how about tomorrow night? It's a date. Gee, Wellickers, boy, my wife can make meatballs. Meatballs! Ah, somebody must have told you they're my favorite. No, honest. Oh, 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 oh. Huh? Oh, oh. Here he is, Mr. Montague. The Airedale that's going to work with you. Say hello to Mr. Montague, Adolph. <laughs> Look, he's giving me his paw. <laughs> Oh, ooh, little doggies, ooh. <laughs> oh, my, isn't that the cutest thing? Adolph is licking Mr. Montague's face. Ooh. Ooh, it, it, it tickles. <laughs> uh, happy days ahead for all of us. We'll be back with the magnificent Montague in just a moment. Now let's hear from a very good friend of yours. This is Bob Hope. Can we steal a second? Say, Bob, did you notice there's a new Chesterfield poster of you around town? Yeah, I saw one in a drugstore the other day. I'm dressed up as Santa Claus. Yeah, and you're holding a carton of Chesterfields with a picture of Bing you-know-who dressed up as Santa Claus. And you're saying, for Christmas gifts, here's the answer. Yep, Crosby for Christmas. Bob, seriously, why did they make Crosby Papa Santa Claus in the Christmas carton instead of you? Well, hi, by tradition, Santa Claus is an old man. Yes. <laughs> Always carrying a sack full. <laughs> Well, in all fairness to Bing, Bob, I must say it's a very attractive gift. And it's packed with 200 of those always milder Chesterfields, which make as fine a gift as anyone could give or anyone could get. And, folks, if you want to prove that just for yourself, make that Chesterfield mildness test. Open them, smell them, compare them, and smoke them. Chesterfield, Chesterfield, always wins first place. That milder, mild tobacco never leaves an aftertaste. So open a pack, give them a smell. Then you'll smoke them. See you Tuesday night, folks, for Chesterfield. And now back to the magnificent Montague. It is the next morning in the now happy, happy Montague apartment. Lily and the new maid are ready for Montague's first breakfast under the new regime. Oh, uh, by the way, Sarah. Yes, Mrs. Montague? Uh, my husband and I are going to the Bronx for dinner tonight. The Zinzes. So don't cook tonight. Yes, ma'am. Oh, Mrs. Montague, do you think Uncle... I mean, Mr. Montague will like me? Oh, now, don't be nervous. Oh, you're shaking. Working for Uncle Goodhart. I'm one of his biggest fans. That will do it. <laughs> On his program yesterday... When he took the sliver out of that dog's paw, and he bandaged the little paw, <laughs> and then, then the dog licked his face. <laughs> He's such a good man. <laughs> no, 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 Sarah. Oh, your nose is getting red. I'm sorry. I, 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 uh, I think he's coming. E-I-O. 
Uh, He's sick. I'll call a doctor. No, no, Sarah, come back. <laughs> he, he's just vocalizing. He's an actor. Lily, uh, who is this angel in white? Well, Edwin, this is our new maid, Sarah. Sarah, the divine Sarah. Oh, Uncle! <laughs> Lily, call her off before she leaks through to the apartment downstairs. <laughs> Edwin, she's overcome with happiness. She's one of your listeners. Good. Uh, come now, Sarah. We must be brave. Bring my breakfast. Yes, Uncle. Oh, Edwin, she is sweet. Naturally. After Agnes, Lizzie Borden, the axe killer of Paul River, would be sweet. <laughs> yeah, I'm hungry. I've been waiting 25 years to have one breakfast not prepared by Agnes. Here's your orange juice, sir. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, uh, oh. <coughs> Edwin, what's the matter with it? What kind of orange juice is this? Agnes never made it like this. There are no seeds in it. Oh! Quiet, quiet! Uh, Sarah, uh, he's not used to orange juice like that. Now take it back to the kitchen, put some seeds in it, and warm it up. Yes, ma'am. Here are your eggs, sir. Let's see. Eggs? This wet mass of goo are eggs? Uh! Will you shut up? Edwin. Oh, Edwin, shame on you. This is our new maid. The new maid? This is Rudolph, the red-nosed reindeer. A red-nosed reindeer? I quit. Now, now, now Sarah. Uncle Goodhart. I'll never believe another thing I hear on the radio again. Not even the weather report. <laughs> Another one gone. And who have you next on the list, Lily? Typhoid Mary? <laughs> Edwin, what's come over you? I'm just getting smart, Lily. I catch on. Catch on? Lily, I'm on to your little plan. You hand-picked that white apron monstrosity to make life miserable for me. Miserable for You're me? taking revenge for my getting rid of Agnes. Edwin, you're getting impossible. Yes, impossible to fool with your snide little tricks. Snide little tricks. Oh, Edwin, what's happened? We're having our first fight. Good. Let's bring it all out into the open. I took you out of those musicals and made you a dramatic actress. For what? So you could steal scenes from me. Edwin Montague, you were, you are, you always will be. A hand. Lily, that is one word I forbid in my home. <laughs> Your home? I have a broadcast to do. Where's my hand? <laughs> Ah, Montague. Springer, take your dirty hands off my sleeve. Dirty? But I just wanted to tell you I made an appointment for you with my tailor. You have a tailor? You mean human hands actually put together those gunny sacks you wear? <laughs> but, Mr. Montague, my tailor. I wouldn't let him make my shroud. <laughs> it would come out with a belt in the back. <laughs> but, Mr. Scat! Oh, hello there, Mr. Montague. I wrote out the directions how to get to my house. How to get where? Well, dinner tonight at my house in the Bronx. My dear, demented friend, I wouldn't be caught dead in the Bronx. But you were coming to dinner. My wife made 25 pounds of meatballs. Oh, you drowned up the children, I hope. <laughs> Mr. Montague, that's the most horrible thing I ever heard in my life. Thank you, Zinza. Thank you. Are we going to have a rehearsal here today? <laughs> ah, here comes my little friend, Adolf. <laughs> Take this! <laughs> Is everybody happy? <laughs> Lily? Lily? Lily, are you home? Here I am, Edward. Sorry I'm not out of your house yet, but there was a lot of packing. Lily, put down those suitcases and stop putting on this second act curtain of back street. Tragedy was never your strongest point. Edwin, I'm leaving you. What did I do now? Edwin, stop this. After that scene this morning. Lily, don't go. Please. Edwin, what's happened to you? 
You were always impossible, but this is impossible. I know it, Lily. I can't help it. I've been going around insulting people, making everybody miserable. I even kicked little Adolf. Lily, I know what's wrong with me. So do I. You do? Yes. Get her back, Lily. Get Agnes back. It's too late. She was my escape valve. Without Agnes to pick on, I'm frustrated. I became your whipping girl instead of Agnes. She was the only one who would strike back. Get Agnes. It's too late. She's with a very fine family. You don't think she'd come back to be tormented by you? Who's that? Oh, Edwin, go to your den. That's Agnes. Agnes? She called. She, she still has some clothes to take away. I'll go. Lily, plead with her. Get her to come back. I wouldn't do that to her, Edwin. You go to your den. You've caused her enough trouble. Come in. Hello, honey. Agnes, how's the new job? The people are wonderful. Beautiful room with a television set. It's Agnes, can we give you this? Agnes, can we bring you that? This morning I sneezed. They brought me breakfast in bed. <laughs> really? Honey, it's driving me nuts. Agnes. Nobody insults me. I got nobody to yell back at. And I got a right to be human. Agnes. I'm like a piece of furniture there. I got no status. At least with Montague, I had a place. That was his enemy. <laughs> oh, but you... About, after 25 years with Montague, who can stand quiet? Those smiles and affection they give me, it makes me sick. Honey, let me come back here. Oh, Agnes, welcome home. Edwin! Lily, did you call? Oh. Hello, Agnes. Hello, Mr. Montague. Edwin, Agnes has come back to us. She has? Yes. Oh, so you came crawling back on your belly like a whipped dog. <laughs> It was you that drew me back here, like a fly to a garbage dump. <laughs> Edwin, Agnes. Why, that big bubble head. All right, Agnes. Lily, put her back on the leash. Edwin, please. If Miss Dutch Kenzer thinks she's going to start throwing her weight around here again, she's a... Uh... Cad, Lily, look at the time. The time? Yes, we're due at the Zinzers for dinner. Home, sweet home. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, America's newest car, the fine new Ford for 1951, is now on display at your neighborhood Ford dealers. And when you see it, you'll find that inside and out, in every detail of design and construction, the 1951 Ford reflects true fine car quality. And in addition, it offers 43 look-ahead features designed to keep the 51 Ford young in appearance and young in performance. For example, there's Ford's smart luxury lounge interiors with their exclusive color-harmonized Ford Craft fabrics. There's the new automatic ride control that automatically adjusts spring reaction to the type of road to give you a level ride, an easy ride. And there's the automatic mileage maker that lets you get the last mile out of every gallon of gasoline for utmost economy. Visit your Ford dealer soon and see the 1951 Ford yourself. You'll agree... You can pay more, but you can't buy better. Join us again next Friday for another transcribed visit with a magnificent Montague starring Monty Woolley. Created and directed by Nat Hyken, written by Nat Hyken and Billy Friedberg. And Seymour was Lily Boehm, Pert Kelton was Agnes. Also heard on tonight's program were Johnny Gibson, Art Carney, John Griggs, Pat Hosley, and Frank Milano. This is Don Pardo saying stay tuned for Duffy's Tavern, which follows immediately. <laughs> <laughs>